If like me, you're fed up with having the electric radiators left on 24 hours a day, no matter whether it's sunny, raining, night, day, on holiday, at work, watch this video because I'm going to show you how to use Home Assistant to easily automate switching them on and off to save you some hard earned cash. Hi everyone, welcome to Project Smart Home, my name is Paul. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've automated switching on and switching off my electric radiators. I'm going to be using the Shelly 1PM Smart Relay to control the on and off of the radiators, which will integrate into Home Assistant. I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to set up the automations. And also, as part of the automation routine, I'm using the Acara temperature and humidity sensor so I can also integrate that into the automation so I know when it gets hot or cold or when the humidity rises in the room. So if you're interested to know how to do that then stick around for the rest of the video and I'll walk you through that now. What I want to do in this part of the video is just talk you through the setup that I've got in place. Um, so as you can see on the screen here, there's a few components. On the left hand side of the screen, I've got the towel radiator. and uh, the top right hand corner, there's the switch fuse spur. Now before I started this, that's all I had in place. So the switched fuse spur was controlling when the radiator was physically turned on or off. There's also control on the radiator, but that, I just ignore that and leave that on. Um, the highest setting. So what I've done is I've introduced the Shelly 1PM which is the relay that allows me to use Home Assistant to switch off and on my radi radiator as and when I need it. So I'm using the Shelly integration and I'll show you how to do that in this video as well. Um, how to configure that integration but essentially I'm using Home Assistant um, to drive the Shelly and when I want the radiator to turn on and off then I'm doing that using the Shelly. So that's the configuration itself. So I've taken the, the switched live on the left hand side of the um, picture here and the left hand side of the switch and taken the switched live into the live on the relay and the switched neutral into the relay as well because essentially what I wanted was to make sure that the physical switch fuse spur was still the main safety device for turning things on and off so I've just interrupted the switched live and neutral um, going into the radiator so when the relay is used it just switches that switch live and neutral on or off and I can control that through Home Assistant. I hope that makes sense but um, leave any questions that you might have around this. Thanks. So in this part of the video I want to take you through setting up or adding the Shelly relay into the Shelly app. So I'm assuming you've got the Shelly app installed at this point. So once you've got the Shelly app opened, you can then click on the cross in the bottom right hand corner, click add device, and I'm discovering it on the Wi-Fi network. So before you do this, make sure you're on the Wi-Fi network that you want the Shelly to be installed on. So for example, I've got an IoT network that I'm adding my Shelly to. You can see there the Shelly was discovered and now it's adding the device to my environment. It's now connecting directly to the Shelly and configuring it. Adding it to the Wi-Fi network. Can then give the device a name. So I forgot to do a recording for my Shelly for the radiator. So this is a Shelly I've installed in, on my bathroom lights to automate those. It's exactly the same process. Uh, so don't be put off by the fact that I'm just doing it for a different room. So give it a name, give the Shelly device a name, tell it what room it's going to be in and then you can save that configuration. 
uh, into the specific room that you wanted it added to. Once you've got the device up and running, I found that you needed to apply a firmware upgrade. So if you go back into the device itself, I'll show you that shortly. And then go into the, the cog thing and then click on firmware updates and do a firmware update. All of the Shelly devices that I've in installed have needed a Shelly update. I've sped this up, uh, this little bit up about three or four times, but it's it takes two or three minutes to, to go through the process, but it's really important you do that before you try and add it to Home Assistant, otherwise it won't work. Once it's installed, then that's pretty much all you have to do in the app. Um, I've gone in here just to show you where to get the IP address, because you might need that when you add it to Home Assistant later on. Now that you've got the Shelly uh, set up in the Shelly app, you can now add Shelly device to Home Assistant. So if you haven't already, then you can go into the Home Assistant interface and add the integration for Shelly, if it's the first time you're adding a Shelly device to the environment. And the IP address that we saw earlier, you can use to um, start configuring the Shelly. In mine, it's discovered the Shelly device already, so I'm not having to go through that process. I'm just configure, configuring a discovered Shelly device. Uh, as I mentioned before, I forgot to do a recording for my bathroom Shelly integration, but the same principles apply here for any Shelly relay device that you're adding into Home Assistant. So you can see it's discovered my Shelly uh, bathroom lights relay there and the IP address that it's on. It's now asking me to assign that Shelly relay to an area in Home Assistant. So it's a new area and I'm adding it to uh, the bathroom there. So once that's in Home Assistant, you can see it's got the strange Shelly plus one name. So we obviously want to rename that. So it's something that's usable and understandable within the Home Assistant interface. So again, this is for uh, my Shelly lights, but again, if it was the bathroom, it would have been the bathroom radiator. So I'm just going through and renaming the switch and the device itself just so it's more easily understandable in Home Assistant. So when I come to configure my automations, I can easily identify um, identify what I'm configuring in the automation. You see that's just asking to update entities as well, which I've done. So now that's done, it's all up and running and ready to configure in a routine. As part of my automation, I'm using a, a Zigbee device from Akara, which is a temperature and humidity device. So within my home assistant, as you can see here, I've got Zigbee to MQTT, already installed and set up and I use this um, for up managing all of my Zigbee devices in and around my house. So with regard to the device that I'm using here, as I said it's a humidity sensor so I've got one installed in my ensuite and also the utility room at the moment and if you're familiar with Zigbee to MQTT then you'll know the routine that you need to go through to, to add this in. But once you've got the sensor or any device, you put it into pairing mode, and then within Zigbee to MQTT, you can um, enable or disable the um, joining process. And once you've got your Zigbee device and your Zigbee to MQTT, both looking for devices, then your new device will appear in this uh, in this interface here. And then you can just go through and, and name it appropriately. And then once you've got that, then you'll have the 
entities exposed that I'm going to make use of in my routine. If you've got any questions or need any help getting these things set up in Zigbee to MQTT, leave a question and I will try to help. But the purpose of this video isn't, isn't to show you how to use Zigbee to MQTT. I just wanted to show you how I've got it set up. What I'll do now is take you through a couple of the automations that I've got set up that um, automatically turn the electric radiators on and off. So this first one I've got set up is um, a fairly straightforward one for the utility room. So it's making use of the Acara humidity sensor. So it's split into two parts. So if the humidity sensor detects high humidity, then it triggers an action. If the, if the humidity sensor um, detects low humidity, then it, it triggers an action. So I'll take you through it. So I'm making use of trigger IDs here so I can um, have all of my automation in one single automation. Uh, previously, when I've switched something on and off, I've tended to do it in two different, uh, two different automations, but I've managed to use um, trigger IDs here just to keep everything together in one automation. So essentially what I'm doing here is using the utility room motion sensor, uh, sorry, utility room humidity sensor. Uh, as the device and the trigger ID is utility room high humidity. So if the humidity sensor detects a change to above 65% humidity, then it's going to do something. It's going to um, take, take some action. So if I go down to the bottom here, I'm then using choices is part of the routine so if this trigger is detected then the routine or the action will then use this device which is the um, Shelly smart relay that's controlling the radiator and turn the radiator on using the utility using the uh, Shelly relay. So that's the first part of it. So obviously we don't want it left on all of the time. So the second part of this is when again using the Acara humidity sensor, when it detects a change to humidity dropping below 55 then it triggers an action. The reason I've, I've, I've been, I've had this up and running for a few weeks now and I've had to um, tweak these values just so they work in my environment and I have to say it's working really well. So when we're detecting moisture in the utility room because there's some wet washing um, that's um, been put on the radiator, then this is this radiator has been switched on as well. So as I say, the second part of this is when it drops below, I guess the obvious thing here then is option two is down here. When this trigger ID is detected, which is low humidity, it's obviously then using the Shelly relay which is the utility room radiator i've called it that shelly relay is then turning off the radiator because the humidity's dropped to a low level so hopefully that makes sense it's pretty straightforward and seems to work quite well as i said i've had to tweak it a little bit in my ensuite i've added a couple of additional variables in there so in addition to the humidity settings, the Acara also has a temperature setting in there as well. So if it's cold, I also want the radiator to come on, not just when somebody's had a shower and they've got a wet, wet towel on the radiator. So if it drops below 16 degrees, 
at any point of the day, then the radiator would also come on. But then I don't want it to be on after one o'clock in the morning. I want it to, to switch off as I've got here. So if any of these test conditions are met, then the radiator will switch off. So if the humidity is low, or if the time trigger is actioned, then the radiator will switch off. So you can start to build some additional complexity in there just to suit how you want things to work. But I'm really, enjoying using these trigger IDs. I think they work really well and allows you to keep all of your automations in a single automation. Hopefully that was useful. Um, if you've got any questions or if I haven't made anything clear, then please feel free to leave some comments and I will get back to you. Thanks. As you got to the end of the video, I'm hoping you found it useful. It saved me a lot of pain walking around the house switching on and off radiators when they've been left on for days on end so hopefully you found it useful i've had the solution in place for a few weeks now it seems to be working really well i'm really impressed with the shelly relays i use them on the radiators as i've described here and you've seen during the video i also use them in various lighting situations as well when i don't have a smart switch and I don't have smart light so as I say they work really well also really like the the tag IDs in the automations that I've started to use so rather than having lots of different automations to switch things on and off I've got everything kind of consolidated into a single automation that works really well as well um, thanks for watching appreciate your time if you've got any comments or thoughts any suggestions for future videos please leave them in the comments below Thanks for watching. Bye for now.